Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. And what we're seeing right now is a very interesting response, perhaps, well, not really that unsurprising really, uh, in regards to the lifting of Iranian sanctions, where of course crude oil has immediately dropped again first thing this morning, down almost 3%. Uh, so West, Tech, West Texas crude almost hit $28 first thing this morning, whereas largely we are seeing the Chinese stock market stabilize. We did see a bit of a sell-off in some of the Middle Eastern stocks on uh, over the weekend, um, mainly obviously led by, by Saudi Arabia. So a little bit of uncertainty in that area uh, as that kind of um, new flood of uh, Iranian oil begins to potentially make itself felt. Now, what impact does that actually going to have kind of longer term? Well, obviously you now have uh, a large number of, uh, of new crude oil barrels uh, getting entered into the market. And um, what that could do is cause a move towards closer down towards uh, $20 a barrel because uh, we're only we're already close to 28 right now so the next potential support is around about 27 dollars we break 27 dollars and then things get a little bit more exacerbated because there's not a lot of other support levels to look forward to on that way down so already there's a large number of global energy stocks that are very precarious. They're very close to the edge of the precipice right now. And um, should that oil price begin to push down towards 25, 24, 23, 22, there is obviously a limit to what these companies are able to, uh, to, to afford and put up with. And it could cause a series of forced liquidations across the energy market, which could have quite big ramifications for global indices at some point in the future. And that's obviously something that should be worrying a, a number of traders who are looking at the global indices for a new opportunity. Now, we're not at that stage as of yet. There could still be stabilization to be found. Obviously, crude oil prices have dropped about 70% uh, from their uh, from their highs from a number of years ago, uh, so there is buying interest at these low levels. But we have been looking at a situation where um, storage space is becoming hard to get by. Um, the volatility in the crude market, you know, one minute it's up five percent, next minute it's down eight percent, is making a number of people very very nervous. So sticking with um, moving on, sorry to to China for a little second, moving away from crude oil because there is a little bit of negativity out there right now in that, in that regard, and it is well founded. But China. China is the short term one that you should probably keep your eye on because tomorrow also brings with it uh, Chinese GDP, retail sales and industrial production. And that in itself can have uh, quite an impact on the global industry market as well. So even though the markets kind of stabilized first thing this morning, those Chinese data results, they come at about you know, 2, 2, 3 a.m. UK time. So that's just something to, uh, to bear in mind. But nevertheless, that gives you an idea of the, kind of the overall picture. It's all about the return of Iranian uh, crude to the market and the impact it's going to have in West Texas. And of course, the impact it's going to have there on Brent as well. And uh, what the Chinese data is going to come out as tomorrow. Now, I think a number of traders are probably going to expect that data to come out slightly better than expected. Because, you know, the Chinese, the Chinese uh, they could really do the data being particularly good right now. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if it came in just a smidgen better than expected. If it came out terrible, I think that would be an absolute shock to the market and that could cause a little bit of extra volatility. But nevertheless, let's go ahead and have a look um, at the major markets from a technical perspective. Okay. So as ever, we like to have a, have a look at the US 30 and uh, we have had a, a kind of a bounce close to 16,000. 69% of CMC Marcus clients are currently short on this market right now as well. So that's totally worth bearing in mind. And um, you can just see that we're pretty much bang on that level right now. Next longer term potential resistance, 16,476. So that's where we currently are for, for that market with the, um, the slow stochastic and the RSI still just, uh, well, the RSI is just below that 30% uh, level. It's not yet ticked up. Whereas um, the, uh, the, R the RSI is just that little bit lower there as well. Okay, moving on to the UK 100. Um, you can see that we have had this, uh, this, this bounce of uh, 57.69 uh, there on Friday. Now we're already off the session lows on the UK 100. That's a little bit disappointing. So it did manage to spike back up, uh, but then it's been pushed right back down. If I actually just go ahead and have a look at the combined view, 72% of CMC market clients are actually buyers of the UK 100 at these levels. And um, it's a little bit unfortunate that it's already getting pushed back down. Moving on to the Japan 225, 75% of CMC market clients are currently short this market. We're in between two ranges, 71, 72 as potential resistance and 16,440 as potential support. Again, we have been higher and it's beginning to slide uh, at the start of today's session. 
Moving on to uh, dollar yen, 55% of CMC market clients are currently long in this market. Uh, we do have potential support at uh, one, uh, 116 spot 80. Um, I managed to bounce off there uh, last week. I did it again there on Friday. It's tried to do it again so far this morning. It has been a little bit higher, but yen buying seems to be coming back into the equation as markets begin to, uh, as stock markets begin to slide first thing. Moving on to West Texas, um, you can just get to see the state of that move. It was down at uh, $28.20. You can see we're at $28.60 right now. Um, and that uh, level of 26.73, I think you actually have to go on to almost like a monthly chart to, uh, to begin to see where those levels are. Um, but that shows you uh, where we are. That would be that point right there. And we are just a little bit further away from there. Very ugly monthly candle that we have on West Texas as well. So let me just quickly nip back onto my daily candlestick for, the, for there. You can just see that we, we are not a million miles away from there right now, uh, but $28 is in, inbound. So moving on to gold, 67% of CMC market clients are currently long. We've almost got a, a golden cross on the moving averages, which would be seen as quite bullish. The MACD histogram is flattening out, so we've almost got a negative crossover in there. That's quite unusual, actually, to get a, to get a golden cross on the moving averages, but then also nearly get a negative crossover on the MACD, while the RSI and slow stochastic are still relatively uh, static at the moment. You can see that gold's tried to rally up. It's been pushed back down. Again, yen seems to be the safe haven of choice. What's very interesting about gold, as ever, is interest rates in the U.S., just are probably not going to be uh, as as prolific as what some of the Fed members would have thought. They've been quite hawkish before in the past, which is really surprising that gold just isn't getting that acceleration. You've got the U.S. dollar potentially not getting that extra boost from you know their four plus interest rate hikes that they were um, banding about at the start of the year, but gold just can't seem to get any love right now. Sixty-seven percent of CMC markets clients are currently long. So finishing up with euro dollar and GBP USD, and um, with euro dollar. A really strong move on the, on the euro there on Friday. It's been pushed back down this morning, potentially bouncing off that 21 period SMA. We're still inside this kind of potential descending triangle formation, so there's not too much to talk about. 67% of CMC markets clients are currently short. And then finishing up with GBP USD, this is beginning to look a little bit ugly. Um, so really horrible day there on Friday. Uh, we've got not much action so far this morning. 142.30 is the next potential support. Uh, with the next potential support all the way down at one spot 35 10 uh, one spot 35 11 sorry that would be particularly catastrophic for the uh, GBP USD 92% of CMC market clients are currently short and um, I think tomorrow we do have a uh, UK CPI we've got a uh, Eurozone um, CPI German CPI and the ZEW business report so that kind of gives you a bit of an idea of what to expect. But remember, it's overnight tonight. Matter of fact, I've got my economic calendar right here. There's no economic data today. We fast forward on to tomorrow. And as you can see there, this is the Chinese data that you really want to be aware of. You know, I don't expect many uh, traders to be up at 2 a.m., 2 a. but these could have quite big ramifications on the markets for tomorrow. Well, guys, that's it from me. Uh, very good luck with your trading. And why don't you join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next? Thank you very much and goodbye.